Hello and thanks for joining us. From Paris's love letter to director Gus Van Sant to discovering the truth with Kate Blanchett and Robert Redford in a newsroom drama, it's time for Encore's weekly movie extravaganza. We have new information on the president's military service. Here's to a great story. You're obscene. We're all obscene. Everyone's obscene. That's the whole point. And we're joined in the studio by film critic Lisa Nesselson. Lisa, hello. Louise. Now we're starting with a movie called Truth. It stars Kate Blanchett and Robert Redford. It's based on a true incident at the television network. CBS that had enormous repercussions back in 2004. Tell us more. Well, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm running a virtual sanctuary for abused movies. I'll come right out and say, I like this movie quite a bit. But if you go back and look at the rather dismissive reviews and some very, very nasty online comments when this movie came out uh, last October in the US, uh, I'm not entirely sure why. So what it's about is a uh, uh, Redford plays Dan Rather, who was the evening news anchor at CBS for a record 24 years, and Blanchett plays television producer Mary Mapes, who worked closely with him on magazine-style reports for the weekly program, 60 Minutes. And to give you a sense of Rather's stature in the American public eye, um, he was in Houston when Kennedy was shot, and he was the one who told the American people what was in the Zapruder film, which no one was allowed to see with their own eyes for a very long time. And in this century, together, Mapes and Rather were the ones who broke the Abu Ghraib story. So, you know, very high professional. Uh, th this tells us that these professionals um, ended up airing a story that questioned whether strings were pulled to get George W. Bush into the Texas Air National Guard instead of serving in Vietnam, uh, and um, whether he went AWOL, was absent, possibly drunk, for a very long period when he was supposed to be on duty. And those are mighty strong allegations to make against a sitting president. Nobody in their right mind would do that on a mere whim. So let's take a look at uh, a friends and colleagues in a very tight spot. They're going to start an investigation. And CBS wants to appoint an independent panel to take a look at how the story is put together. And I'm going to announce it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to apologize for the story on air. Andrew asked you to apologize? He didn't ask. Now, I have to admit, <laughs> I found Kate Blanchett's performance mighty annoying, and I didn't find the story compelling at all. In fact, when I came out, I had to Google it to remind myself of the facts. <laughs> You've already admitted, confessed, that you like it. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, this film shows us what journalists actually do. You you follow a lead and you try to get somebody to go on the record to back it up. You you get an expert and you try to get them to go on the record to back it up. And another thing the journalists do is think. They put the pieces together. They try to report the story. Um, here's what, what's being tracked down is the truth. And I think my colleague Justin Chang may have said it best when he wrote, quote, it's the feel bad journalism movie of the year, a despairing last gasp for an era when substance mattered more than scandal. And this was the first time, and this was only in 2004, that the internet rose up and immediately assessed something that had been on network television. So I like it for that. Okay, I prefer the series, the newsroom. <laughs> okay, let's move on to um, another film on French screens, A Bigger Splash. It's an updated retelling of a French classic from 1969 called La Piscine or The Swimming Pool. You say it's a very odd movie. What's it about? Oh, well, it's about unfettered, wealth-fueled, sex-drenched narcissists. And I think that uh, when people are good at what they do, and narcissists are very good at navel-gazing and assuming they are the center of the universe, that's a valid topic for, uh, for a story. But uh, here we have uh, Tilda Swinton as Marianne, who is a global pop star who has to rest her vocal cords or risk losing the ability to speak or sing forever and ever. And uh, Matthew Schonartz is her boyfriend, Paul, a documentary filmmaker and recovering alcoholic. And they're enjoying a romantic, carnal getaway in a beautiful settling setting in Italy uh, when um, when along comes uh, their extremely annoying 
a friend, record producer Harry, played by Ray Fiennes. And in tow, he has uh, a very young woman who he says is his recently discovered daughter, Penelope. Um, I, uh, Harry is used to getting what he wants, and what he wants in this case is Marianne, because they used to be an item, but in that charming way men sometimes have, he actually sort of gave Marianne to Paul. But she's very happy with Paul now and does not want to be uh, retaken away by Harry. So a charming group of people. This is what happens when they all have dinner together. What is your name? What is your favorite color? Seriously, you want me to thank you? <laughs> what is your quest? To not end up with Julie Andrews, <laughs> get it? Mm. Excuse that. Quattro d'acri. Uh, uh, tre, tre. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. It's certainly a very intriguing cast, but then the French original had quite a cast too, didn't it? Oh, you can say that again. French director Jacques Deray had the impossibly gorgeous Alain Delon and the equally impossibly gorgeous Romy Schneider, whose parts here are played by uh, the undeniably attractive Mike. Tyus Schoenartz and uh, Tilda Swinton. And um, the young woman was the then only 22-year-old Jane Birkin. And uh, the man that she came with, the annoying guy, was played by Maurice Ronet, who was uh, very much a staple in films back then, and uh, and also as much of a womanizer as Alain Delon. So the film, uh, without swear words and without uh, overt sexual scenes, there is a lot of nudity and, and a lot of frolicking uh, and a lot of Latin words, sex acts in, uh, in the new one, but uh, without all that, it still managed to be incredibly tense. And it's about how wealthy people can behave badly and possibly get away with it. Okay, I think lots of people are going to go out and watch both of those <laughs> um, films after that review, Lisa. Now, the director of Goodwill Hunting and Milk, Gus Van Sant, is in Paris for a retrospective at Paris's Cinémathèque. Now, the French describe him as anti-conformist, daring and radical. Remind us of his work. Well, he's made 16 feature films in roughly 30 years, and uh, this is the first uh, exhibit in retrospective to honor all aspects of his creative output as a painter, photographer, video director, and filmmaker. I think his career is interesting because his filmography is so incredibly uneven, uh, and he's been able to infuse his indie sensibilities and also make very big, splashy sort of Hollywood-style movies. In my mind, he's made two masterpieces, and that would be Drugstore Cowboy in 1989 and To Die for in 1995, uh, which is usually referred to as Nicole Kidman's first major starring role. And she's a very ambitious small town weather person on television. And uh, it's they're both extraordinary. My Own Private Idaho was a fascinating experiment about handsome street kids starring dreamy Keanu Reeves and painfully talented River Phoenix as a hustler prone to narcolepsy. And I can't say that that's a story that's been done to death. He also directed Milk about uh, Harvey Milk. And uh, he made an award-winning popular success that I don't care for one bit, called Goodwill Hunting. He won the top prize, the Palme d'Or in Cannes in 2003 with Elephant, which is a very interesting film. It gets more interesting with time about the mood in a high school, uh, in a Columbine-like high school before all hell breaks loose. And last May in Cannes, his film uh, Sea of Trees was horribly derided in the competition. <laughs> so much um, <laughs> when we look back at his career. Well, I sat down and with him yesterday in the exhibition and we chatted about his career. He told me why he keeps returning to the theme of youth in nearly all of his works. I think it's just a, a period of time where um, you're, you're the most beautiful and you're the most, uh, like, maybe resilient and the most uh, changeable and the most, uh, I guess, in need of um, information that maybe I keep, like, centering on, like, in certain, in different, different ways. And my whole interview is going to be broadcast on France 24 later this month, so keep an eye out for that. Did you like the exhibition? I did. It's very compact. It's not as ambitious as a lot of the shows the, the Cinematheque has put on, but what's especially interesting is the Polaroid portraits he took of, uh, of people who came to casting sessions and just his circle of friends in the 70s and 80s, and a lot of those people you'll recognize, and it's fun to see them early in their careers. Okay, well, he's actually working at the moment on a new series about the gay rights movement in the U.S. called When We Rise. I know you don't have a television, Lisa, but it is all about the television series at the moment, and people are gathering in Paris all over the next week or so. Um, 
to talk about that. You sneaky, sneaky person. You've revealed to the universe <laughs> that I don't actually own a TV. Um, yes, this is, uh, this is not just for professionals. This is absolutely for the general public. And it's a brilliant concept that was initiated by a small team of people here at the Forum des Images, which is run by the city of Paris. And they thought, how about if we treat episodic TV series the way we treat movies, which is to show them on the biggest screen possible. And it's a stupendous idea. And uh, so this is the seventh edition. And their initiative is caught on on film festivals now all over the world. It is free to the general public. This year they have a jury headed by David Chase of Sopranos fame and they'll be picking from eight series. All but one of them are about police or investigative themes and uh, opening night is uh, Vinyl which is of course the series uh, spearheaded by Mick Jagger and Martin Scorsese. It is carefully programmed. It is curated with stuff from all over the world. They're hosting a European co-production forum and uh, these series are made all over the world and in fact ones that came from uh, Israel and Denmark uh, have been adapted quite successfully for the US. And is there one in particular that you're looking forward to? Uh, well, I'm very much looking forward to uh, the one based on Stephen King's novel about the professor who tries to go back in time and stop the Kennedy assassination. But among the guests this year is uh, Cuba, Jubing, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., who plays ex-football star uh, O.J. Simpson in what promises to be the very interesting The People versus O.J. Simpson. It certainly does. Um, it looks very intriguing. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Now, we're going to leave you with that, The People versus O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story. Remember our website? We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Do you think he did it? She was terrified of him. No, I'm not a public personality. I don't know how to do this. He's my friend. I don't turn my back on people. You're turning your back on Nicole. Who the hell signs a suicide note with a happy face? I ain't trying to be respectful. I'm trying to win. You want to make this a black thing? Well, I'm not black. I'm OG. Down to Earth. Globally, one person in nine goes to bed hungry. How can we change our production and consumption to distribute food resources fairly? From famine in conflict zones to foreseeable disasters, our team takes you to the source of the problem. Discover the tools that can help end world hunger. Down to Earth, on France 24 and France24.com.